Sir, we are on live on YouTube, so we can start the session. You guess, sir. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so here we meet again uh, in the uh, second session, <clears throat> which is a marine hull insurance. Marine cargo was the one which we dealt with earlier. Uh, this is marine hull insurance. Now, again, uh, as I told you in the beginning of marine cargo insurance, uh, it is very difficult to complete the entire marine cargo uh, insurance within two hours. Likewise, marine hull insurance is also such a vast topic that it cannot be covered within two hours. Uh, however, <clears throat> what I'll try to do is... Jeevan, uh, sir, I'll try to do it. Yes, I'll try to do it. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, yes. Uh, so, we will be straight away starting with uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Again, uh, I am assuming that uh, at some point of the time during the entire uh, <clears throat> the service period, what you have been uh, working as an underwriter or a claim settler, uh, I assume that you might have come across some terminologies of hull insurance. So uh, I'm going to share a screen with you. And, uh, <clears throat> I hope uh, everyone is able to see this. Just a yes, moment. Sir. Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Yes. So I assume everyone is able to see this PowerPoint presentation. Now, <clears throat> let us start with a simple uh, requirement of hull insurance. I mean, who requires hull insurance? Who all have insurable interest in hull insurance? And they are these people. Ship owners interest, ship repairers, ship builders, charterers, who are charterers, I will come to that, mortgages, mortgages are those people who, uh, let us say banks, banks provide the insured with money uh, for building up the vessel, so it is just like hypothecation or uh, hyper, higher purchase agreement, so, so mort mortgage, and P&I interests, that is prof uh, protection and indemnity. Now, what is protection and indemnity? We will come to that later. See, uh, if you must have, if you uh, if you have attended the previous lecture on money cargo insurance, I told you that in collision liability in hull insurance, only the seventy five percent of the claim is payable, whereas the remaining twenty five percent of the claim, that is one fourth collision liability, is taken care by P and I clubs, isn't it? So, <clears throat> P&I, what is P&I? We will study it. Now, let us come to each uh, person's interest one by one. So, what is basically the ship owner's interest as far as hull insurance is concerned? See, the hull itself and the machinery that is fit, fitted inside it, which propels the hull, in whatever direction, in in the high seas or in 
<coughs> coastal waters, whatever it is. Then comes the second part is the freight. Freight is the earnings of the ship. Okay. <coughs> In simple words, it is rent. Okay. Now, ordinary, ordinary freight is payable by cargo owner. Okay. If it is chartered vessel. Now, what is a chartered vessel? Let me tell you. Uh, see, suppose I am a vessel owner and I want to ply my vessels in the ocean. But I do not know I do not know that. I am totally unaware of what kind of cargo can my vessel carry. Or I do not have that much contacts so that I will gather those contacts and make these people load their goods on my vessel and then I will ply in, uh, my vessel in the ocean. Rather than doing this, I will give my vessel to a charterer. The charterer will ply the vessel on my behalf. Okay. So if I am chartering the vessel to a charterer, then the freight will be payable by the charterer. Okay. If I myself am the owner of the vessel and I am plying the vessel in the ocean, then ship owner carries his own goods on the, in his ship. He is permitted to insure freight as well. So I will be insuring the freight as well. Okay. Now, liabilities in case of uh, hull insurance. What are the li carrier's liability to cargo owners? Let us, uh, let us assume uh, the goods are carried by some person who is a carrier. The goods will not be carried by, it will be carried usually by a logistic person and, uh, or a logistic company, isn't it? So, the liability of the cargo will be on the carrier if there is a loss in insurance. Then there is collision liability. And then after there is a collision, there is something called as wreck. The, in uh, fire insurance, we can say debris. Okay. So, this wreck hai, after an accident, whatever wreck is created, that removal of wreck is also a liability. Now, there are other subsidiary interests that are associated with this. And they are disbursements. Now, you might have come across this word a numerous number of times, disbursement. Basically, it is nothing but whatever is built on the vessel after the machinery is fitted on the vessel. See, the vessel will have machinery, propelling machinery fitted on it, isn't it? But apart from this, there will be servant quarters, there will be toilets, there will be... Uh, a room which will be especially uh, occupied by the captain. Isn't it? All these are called as fit outs. This is called as the fitting out and these are called as disbursements. Okay. <clears throat> Second is uh, premium reducing. That is premium lost post loss and loss of hire or earnings. Again, if your vessel is stranded, you are losing hire, you are losing your earnings. Just that it happened in uh, COVID times. Now, this were the interests associated with the ship owner. Now, let us assume what if you are the owner of the vessel and you give your vessel to some other party, charterer. To some other party, a charterer. And you use their vessels. I will give you an example which I am underwriting right now. Uh, there is a very renowned oil insurance, uh, oil company, Hindustan Petroleum Com uh, Corporation Limited. Now, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited do not own vessels. They do not have their own vessels. But they have huge amount of cargo that flows from the Middle East, Mexico, South America, and from Russia to India. Crude oil other. Now, Ichanasara crude oil India may lane ki liye, they will have to, they will require ships, they will require tankers. 
So what they do is they hire these ships, and HPCL will act as charters now. Okay, because they are going to take the ship from the owner. They are going to take the ship to say, for example, Saudi Arabia. Udar wo they load load karenge, and then they will bring that oil over here and uh, empty the tanker at uh, say Mumbai refinery. and again send the vessel somewhere else so here hpcl is acting as a charterer so in this when goods held in trust you can say that owner koi dusra hai lekin vessel to mere trust mein hai hpcl ke trust mein so charterer is responsible for the safety of the ship whilst under his control okay so loss of freight the charterer has an insurable interest in the money paid or payable by him See, ultimately, he is going to pay <coughs> the freight to the ship owner, isn't it? Bada dena padega vessel. We can ensure that as well. Okay. Now, other interests is mortgages interests. See, the bankers, financial institutions who lend money to the ship owners will have their own financial interest, which is. Attached to the vessel. If something happens to the vessel, the claim will be paid to the mortgagee, to the to the mortgagee. Now, ship builders' interest. Now, let us assume that an X Y Z company wants to build its own vessel, its own vessel. So, do you know who are the ship builders of the nation? Ship builders to the nation are Mazgaudok. Okay, so India में ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा जो बड़ी ships बनती है, they are built at Mazgaudok. ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा. So let us assume that an X Y Z company comes to Mazgaudok and they say that I want particular kind of a crude oil tanker built by you. So Mazgaudok. Will take a ship builder's insurance because any loss that occurs to the vessel or the hull body during building of that ship is covered under ship builder's insurance. Okay, so builder's interest can be insured from the time the keel is laid, that is the base is laid till the launching of the ship. Okay. When the ship goes for repairings, ship repairers' interest. Just say you might have heard this term called dry dock. Dry dock, right? I mean, in a dock, there is a horseshoe kind of a structure. It 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 looks like a well. Okay. When there is high tide, water is completely filled in it. At that time, the vessel is carried out in that dry dock and it is anchored. Jab लो टाइड होता है वो पूरा पानी निकल जाता है नाउ देयर इज ओनली वेसल इनसाइड नाउ द पीपल हु आर गोइंग टू रिपेयर इट कैन सिंपली क्लाइंब डाउन द ड्राई डॉक एंड सिंपली रिपेयर इट दिस इज आल्सो डन एट मजगांव डॉक देयर आर शिप रिपेयरर यार्ड जो दारूखाना दवाखाना दारूखाना इन मुंबई सो Ship repairers' interest will cover the liability arising during the time of repairs. During the time of repairs, if there is any loss, again the vessel is in the custody of the ship repairers. So he is going to be uh, own uh, has the owners of the of the loss. So he will be the one who will be paying the liability. Now. Protection and indemnity interest. I as I told you in the earlier lecture, जो कुछ हल के पॉलिसी में कवर नहीं होता दैट इज कवर्ड अंडर पी एंड आई इंटरेस्ट सी लॉस ऑफ लाइफ इज नेवर कवर्ड अंडर हल इट इज कवर्ड अंडर पी एंड आई वन फोर्थ कोलिजन लाइबिलिटी नॉट बोन बाय द इंश्योरर आई टोल्ड यू दैट थ्री फोर्थ कोलिजन लाइबिलिटी इज बोन बाय द इंश्योरर दैट इज 75% बट द रिमेनिंग 1/4% 1/4 पार्ट इज बोन बाय द पी एंड आई टर्म्स Damage to harbors. If you remember, in the last lecture, I told you that if a vessel enters the dock and it breaks the berth, who is going to pay the losses of the berth? That will be paid under P and I. Hello. 
इन्फ्रिंजमेंट ऑफ राइट क्वारंटाइन एक्सपेंसिस See, quarantine expenses are never paid. If there is a contamination, let us assume the the, the vessel which was stranded uh, on the shore of Shanghai <coughs> during the COVID. The first vessel that was stranded was that. It was, I mean, the people who were inside that vessel were not even told that why they are not allowed to get out of the vessel. Okay, slowly and slowly it came to their understanding that. they have been quarantined that vessel was quarantined at the dock of shanghai <clears throat> and any losses which occurred during this were not covered under any hull insurance policy but it was covered under pni okay <clears throat> shipwreck indemnity to crew crew members agar crew ko kuch lag gaya shipwreck ki wajah se during the removal of the shipwreck if the crew is injured who is going to pay the hull insurance policy does not pay it so who is paying p and i seepage and pollution is taken care of by p and i clubs now p and I, there are not many p and i clubs across the world and uh, uh, the enrollment fee of p and i clubs is extremely high so it is not possible for each and every vessel Flying in the ocean uh, to be a part of a P and I club because one uh, he, my opinion, say India may only have a P and I club. Uh, it is in Crow Boda, because a P and I club. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, there are no P and I clubs over here in India. They are all internationally placed. Okay, now type of policies. Now, in marine cargo, there were various number of policies. Uh, open policy, the open cover, the open cover certificate, specific voyage. Yes, Anik Agarwal raised hand. Sir, infringement rights. One more time. Yeah. So, infringement rights. Infringement rights by P and I. Love. Okay. Oh, fourth one. <coughs> infringement of rights. Okay. Uh, let us assume. <coughs> <clears throat> let us assume that during a particular uh, incident during a particular incident some part of the vessel or some uh, part of the cargo which is boarded on the vessel has to be removed and kept on the port in order to carry out a temporary repair works so it is the right of the ship owner or the charterer to do that however any loss that is occurring to the vessel or the cargo during this is not covered under hull in insurance so it is the right to ye infringe karne ke liye p and i club ye kar deta hai okay now <clears throat> time policies uh, see there are only two types of policies one is time policy and the other is voyage policy as i told you that in marine cargo insurance <clears throat> all the all the policies are issued on annual basis वैसे ही time policies are issued on annual basis all hull insurance policies are time policy matlab uska jaise institute cargo clauses tha marine cargo mein in marine hull mein it is institute times clauses okay 110 1983 both famous clauses now all policies are issued for 12 months now there is one particular policy which is builders risk insurance policy as i told you you want to build a ship you go to mazgaon dock you pay them money you provide them material they start building the ship one year is over the ship is not ready abhi kya karenge policy khatam ho gaya you will extend the policy for 6 months Okay. Further, you will extend the policy for six months. So this provision is there in builder risk insurance. Okay. Ship repairers may be a provision here, but in usually ship repairing का काम रहता वो एक साल में खत्म हो जाए. Building of the vessel requires a lot of time. Okay. Now <clears throat> there are voyage policies. Voyage policy is you know what? Uh, uh, let us assume that there is a vessel. Uh, which is uh, or maybe there is a uh, luxury vessel 
yacht जिसको हम लोग बोलते हैं वी सी ऑफन एट गेट वे ऑफ इंडिया दिस यॉट हैज टू अंडर गो पेंटिंग लेट अस से इट हैज टू अंडर गो पेंटिंग एंड दे वॉन्ट टू सेंड दिस पर्टिकुलर यॉट एट गोवा शिप यार्ड ओके तो दिस वॉयज टू गोवा शिप यार्ड इस कवर अंडर वॉयज पॉलिसी ओके वी कैन से दैट इट इज अ वॉयज टू द रिपेयर यार्ड Yeah, it is a voyage to the a uh, furnishing yard. Okay, then delivery voyage. If abhi vessel to ban gaya idhar, lekin mujhe deliver karna hai Singapore mein. See, ship builders insurance. Now, ship builders insurance can uh, you know what it it starts at the time when the keel is laid, and it continues till trial runs. लेकिन ट्रायल रन्स में क्या होता है में दैट वेसल कैन प्लाई इन हाई सीज ओशन में जा सकता है बट अप टू सर्टन लिमिट आई थिंक इट इज 50 नॉटिकल माइल्स नॉट मोर देन दैट वी विल कम टू दैट एज वेल बियॉन्ड दैट इफ इट गोस देन द कवर सीजेस ओके सो नाउ लेट अस अज्यूम दैट अ वेसल इज रेडी एट मजगांव डॉक इट हैज टू बी डिलीवर्ड टू सिंगापुर देन अ डिलीवरी वॉयज हैज टू बी टेकन ओके then voyage to dry docks for classification survey as we know that there are 14 classification societies in the world so every vessel has its own class say for example agar koi ek warship hai destroyer class and uh, immediately wo destroyer class kyunki uska khatam ho gaya now it has become a museum so we have to classify that <coughs> uh, at dry docks फ्यूनरल वॉयज और शिप ब्रेकर फ्यूनरल वॉयज मतलब इट इज द लास्ट फाइनल वॉयज ऑफ द वेसल जहां पे वो वेसल जा रहा है शिप ब्रेकर यार्ड में जहां पे वो तोड़ा जाएगा ओके इट इज द लास्ट वेसल इट इज द लास्ट वॉयज ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर वेसल एज आई टोल्ड यू देखो सी इफ यू रिमेम्बर दैट थर्टी ईयर्स इज द is the you know sea worthiness or the life span commercial life span of a tanker oil carrying tanker so once these 30 years are over it will go to the ship breakers yard for and that that ship breakers yard ka jo journey hai na usko funeral voyage bolte hain akhri voyage uske baad wo ship ko bhi dekhega nahi now uh, these are the uh, societies that are present across the world jitne bhi badi vessel the tankers bolo ya koi bhi dusra vessel bolo they are either registered with one of these uh, societies okay for india it is indian register of shipping irs okay now look at the bottom it is chora thoda chhota likha hai lekin dekho all indian flag vessels irrespective of type some insured trading warranty may be accepted for hull insurance even if singly classed with the irs without warranting any non classification extra kabhi kabhi vessels hai na do societies ke paas classed rehta hai kabhi kabhi apna indian vessel hai na agar irs ke sath agar classed hai it is enough we can insure <coughs> now So, let us come to the types of uh, is there someone uh, talking or is there i mean uh, do you have any question or something like that shall i go ahead okay uh, so there are mainly two types of vessels uh one is sundry vessels and other is ocean going vessels now ocean going vessels jo rehta hai na wo uska hi zyada matlab size rehta hai uska hi zyada premium rehta hai aur uska hi zyada vulnerability rehta hai because they are the vessels which will be flying in high seas okay they, so they are more susceptible to undergo loss okay then there is sundry vessels sundry vessels are small vessels fishing vessel le lo ya chota sailing vessel le lo ya dredgers what are dredgers is 
dredgers are special purpose vessels which are used to clear the channels of the seabed so that bigger ships can pass through that particular patch of the ocean agar aap if you happen to go to uh, gateway of india you will see one uh, kind of a vessel which is exactly flat it has nothing else and there will be mud flying from the back of that vessel that is nothing but the dredger it is just clearing the channels of the seabed so that big ships can fly through that okay now sundry vessels uh, barges pontoons flats launches passenger vessels tugs etc these are all uh, inland vessels okay now inland waters jo rehta hai na you see uh, there is one uh, one particular area uh, one particular port which is called as the tutti corin port tutti corin is somewhere in tamil nadu okay that acts as a demarcation point to so, tutti corin ke ye side pe jitna bhi hai usko west coast bolte hai and tutti corin ke wo side pe hai usko sabko east coast bolte hai remember that if the vessel is supposed to ply only on the west coast of india it should not go beyond tutti corin and if the vessel is supposed to fly only on the east coast of india it should not go beyond tutti corin i hope i have made myself clear so see flying through harbor waters backwaters see within 12 nautical miles from the prominent port rivers canals lakes waters etc now we can provide short period policies by charging premium on short period basis short rate of uh, pro rata basis then cover seizes if the insured vessel is undergoing conversion ya jumboization agar chhota engine se usko nikal ke agar bada engine laga rahe so that is called as jumboization you are increasing the capacity of the vessel so that is not covered unless and until an extra premium is paid and some insured is increased because when you are going to modify it when you are going to improve the engine the some insured is naturally going to increase so we have to pay that premium increase the some insured accordingly and uh, then and only then this jumboization or conversion of inland vessels will be covered in so <coughs> it is evident from the last point post conversion ya yeah, jumboization the hull and machinery cover may be given on a new sum insured with a renewed tonnage as the capacity increases the tonnage increases now what is tonnage gross registered tonnage we will come to that as we proceed now <clears throat> usually inland vessels are rated according to the type of engine and the collision bulkhead okay kabhi kabhi hota hai single bottom twin engine and with collision bulkhead so this is one kind of a vessel sometimes it is single bottom single engine with collision bulkhead sometimes it is double bottom twin engine with collision bulkhead double bottom single engine with collision bulkhead now depending on whether it is twin engine ki single engine the premium is decided if it is twin engine risk is low single engine risk is high okay if it is single bottom risk is low uh, risk is high if it is double bottom risk is low it is it is very clear because those with double bottoms will ply the ocean safely ya yeah, fir uh, will be less susceptible to rough weather even though if they are plying in the lakes or rivers whatever it is vessels without proper self propelled machinery to matlab jo chappu hum log chalate hain okay single bottom collision head and double bottom collision head so these are the basic classification of the vessels now this is what i was talking about when i uh, said about that <coughs> mud flying from the back of the vessel dredgers these are special purpose vessels used for desilting the ocean or river bed 
thereby clearing the channels for movement of other vessels okay now inland waters plying in sheltered and protected waters of rivers creeks now you have to remember whenever we say inland waters it does not exceed 12 nautical miles keep this in mind okay it does not exceed 12 nautical miles from the prominent seaport okay now we can provide short period policies by charging premium on provided services fleet discount yahan pe available nahi hai okay and rating of inland treasures is done as per their age and gross registered tonnage what is gross registered tonnage i will come to that we will come to that dredgers meant to operate on east coast ye maine bataya tha tum log cannot ply on the west coast and vice versa and which is the demarcation point to dikorin to dikorin port is the demarcation point there are some vessels which acquire license to ply at east coast of india as well as west coast of india so unke license pe eci/wci likha rehta hai that means that particular vessel is deemed to fly uh, deemed to ply in waters at east coast as well as at west coast okay <clears throat> ocean going vessels uh, the vessels general cargo vessels matlab jo नॉर्मल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स लेके जाने वाला वेसल है या फिर छोटा मोटा मशीनरी लेके जाने वाला वेसल है या फिर मोबाइल फोन्स दीज जनरल कार्गो वेसल्स दे आर ग्रॉस टनेज इज फाइव हंड्रेड फाइव थाउजेंड मेट्रिक टन वॉट आर दे एग्जाम्पल कंटेनरशिप्स बार्जेस आर ओ आर ओ दैट इज रोल ऑन रोल ऑफ रिफर्स दैट इज रेफ्रिजरेटेड वेसल्स livestock carriers log carriers heavy lift vessels these are all general cargo vessels now <clears throat> there is there are two types of general cargo vessels ek hota hai liner dusra rehta hai tramp now this you might have come across numerous number of times liner is a vessel which runs on an advertised schedule if it has said that it is going to leave the port of norfolk usa on 12th of april 2022 at 12 pm it will leave on 12th of april uska aage piche nahi hota it runs on an advertised schedule and what is a tramp tramp is a vessel which does not run on an advertised schedule so if you think that my goods which are loaded on this tramp vessel are leaving the port of saudi arabia tomorrow and will be approximately reaching me within 5 days so the goods may not reach at your end in 5 days it may be possible that the vessel is still at saudi arabia for another 5 days because it is a tramp it is not running on an advertised schedule okay tramps are usually bad risks because if you load a perishable cargo on tramp loss is 100% coming so which is a better risk is a liner as compared to tramp okay sometimes what happens is tramp saudi arabia se nikal raha and it is going to reach uh, let us say nawashiva port but midway it receives a call and uh, the captain is advised to uh, change the course and go to iraq for picking up some goods okay general cargo so it goes to iraq midway it was not advertised so it has gone so these are bad risks tramps are bad risks and tramps are usually ill maintained उसमें कोई क्रू का कॉम्पिटेंसी होगा नहीं रहे नहीं रहता है सो दे आर बैड रिस्क रिमेम्बर दिस लाइनर्स एंड ट्रैम्प्स लाइनर्स रन ऑन एडवर्टाइज शेड्यूल ट्रैम्प्स डू नॉट नाउ वी कम टू डीबीसीस ड्राई बल्क कैरियर्स जितना भी ड्राई कार्गो है और 
food grains phosphates minerals coal these are carried by dry bulk carry uh, cargo carriers now bulk carriers come in various sizes panamax panamax matlab this vessel can pass through the panama canal suez max matlab this particular vessel can pass through the suez canal cape size matlab cape of good hope se nikal sakta hai ye vessel okay depending on the size of the vessel it is classed as a panamax or a suez max now you might be knowing this recently in 2020 or 2021 there was a vessel suez max vessel suez canal mein strand ho gaya tha evergreen hai na it was a container vessel strand ho gaya tha it was passing through suez canal easily lekin wo aisa ho gaya to canal hi block ho gaya all the traffic from both the sides was jammed for a day or two and it cost it costed around 800 crores of loss only in the us okay so bahut sara uh, losses associated hota hai hal se now an underwriter has to keep in mind the following things the nature of cargo routes plied whether the vessel is converted to carry dry bulk cargo or whether the vessel is safe see if if the vessel is passing through the route abhi at present let us assume that you are an underwriter uh, and the cargo which is carried is let us say uh, food grains chalo theek hai food grains but it is going to pass through the black sea <coughs> So will you be rating at uh, just as you rate the other vessels? No. If it is coming through the Black Sea, it is coming through troubled waters. It is coming through the troubled waters, so its rating high should be. So underwriter has to keep again the geographical and the political conditions in mind. Okay. If he also has to take care that whether this vessel initially was a car uh, uh, crude oil carrier. and now it is converted to uh, carry dry bulk cargo if it is that then again it undergoing losses is the chances of it undergoing losses is high so all these things are to be considered and then finally the premium rate has to be right now we come to lbcs <laughs> liquid bulk carriers that is tankers they are fitted out to carry bulk liquids that is crude oil crude oil okay now a vessel which is carrying crude oil is at least carrying a cargo of around 900 to 800 crores of rupees in it vessel ka sum insured alag hai okay so in tankers collision damage is more costly to repair due to the live nature of the cargo yaar ye crude oil hai idhar agar loss ho gaya when the ship is loaded and you have to repair it when it is being loaded it is very difficult extremely difficult otherwise ye khali karne ke liye tum log ko dusra vessel lagega isme tum log vessel ka pura oil khali kar doge and then you will have to send this vessel to the uh, repairers yard which is extremely costly okay they have shorter lives than dry bulk cargoes due to corrosive effect of the liquid on steel itna continuously now today if it is carrying uh, arabian light oil tomorrow it is carrying uh, roncador oil from mexico uh, day after tomorrow it is carrying uh, oil from saudi aramco so ये डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ऑयल्स एक्सपोज टू द स्टील विल कॉज करोजन ऑफ द स्टील ओके दिस लीड्स टू दैट वेसल बींग ससेप्टेबल टू मोर लॉसेस तो इसका लाइफ कम रहता है ओके डेंजर ऑफ फायर एंड एक्सप्लोजन डैमेज ड्यूरिंग क्लीनिंग एंड सर गैस सर्टिफिकेट इज ऑप्टेन्ड बिफोर द वेसल एंटर्स द ड्राइवर सी 
even if you remove the entire oil na there are residue gases there are residue gases inside the vessel residue gases rehne ki wajah se aur agar tum logo ne welding chalu kiya ho to aise hi welding ka flame nikla these residue gases catch catches fire and the entire ship blows away so a gas certificate has to be obtained when it enters the dry dock before any dry works are carried out on the vessel so liquid bulk carriers pose a higher risk remember this risk of pollution post damage makes salvage operations extremely difficult and expensive okay agar spillage ho gaya to pollution badhta hai isn't it now what are super tankers super tankers are vlcc that is very large crude carriers which carry cargo from 100000 to 300000 dead weight tonnage okay then apart from vlcc matlab very large crude carriers se bhi upar rehta hai ultra large crude carriers ulcc they carry cargo which is more than 300000 dead weight tonnage so the largest crude carriers are ulcc not vlcc vlcc is very large ulcc is ultra large so 300000 dead weight tonnage se upar अगर कार्गो का वजन रहेगा देन इट इज अल्ट्रा लार्ज कैरियर यू हैव टू कीप दिस इन माइंड ओके जस्ट अ मोमेंट जस्ट अ मोमेंट वीएलसी के नॉट पास थ्रू सुइस कैनाल वेन फुल्ली लोडेड ओके तो अगर कोई वेसल लोड कर रहा है एंड इफ इट इज कंप्लीटली लोडेड इट विल नॉट पास थ्रू सुइस कैनाल There is every possibility that it won't pass through it. So depends. Okay, वो कितना कार वो carry कर रहा है. Okay. Very careful navigation is required. If careful navigation is not done, what happens is evergreen. That happened a few years back. Okay. Repairs are costly. Again, because of the live nature of the cargo. Violent explosions possible during tank cleaning operations. As I told you earlier. now there are abhi we we did something called as general cargo vessels which are container ships etc then we did something called as a uh, dry bulk cargo which carries oil coal uh, i mean sorry uh, mineral coal uh, coal fair gypsum bolo ya food grains bolo then we did something which carries liquid that is liquid bulk oil now we are doing combination carrier it carries oil as well as dry cargo so obo is oil bulk oil uh, iska capacity rehta hai 70000 to 150000 dead weight tonnage oil slash ore matlab ek side mein oil rahega dusre side mein ore rahega और मतलब जिप्सम बोलो बॉक्साइड बोलो मैग्नेटाइट बोलो हिमेटाइट बोलो वट एवर ओर दैपेसिटी इज वन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू टू फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डेड वेट एज वेल लिक्विड कार्गो अभी दे कैन स्विच फ्रॉम वन ट्रेड टू अनदर डिपेंडिंग ऑन द ट्रेड इन रिक्वायरमेंट अगर मेरा ऐसा ट्रेड है कि अभी ऑयल का जरूरत नहीं है तो आई कैन यूज दिस वेसल टू कंप्लीटली कैरी ड्राई कार्गो कन्वर्टिबल है जैसे कि जीप रहता है उसका हुड रहता है है ना इफ आई डोंट वांट द हुड आई कैन सिंपली रिमूव इट इट्स जस्ट लाइक दैट इफ यू डू नॉट वांट टू कैरी ऑयल बिकॉज द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ऑयल या डिमांड ऑफ ऑयल इन दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइम ऑफ टाइम इज लेस i can carry dry cargo in that vessel this is called as combination carrier now they contain large hatches for bulk cargoes to be loaded and unloaded and tanks for oil okay container vessel evergreen was a container vessel okay it is written in green since it was evergreen i wrote it in green these are also called as cellular vessels 
Now the capacity is measured in TEUs or FEUs. TEU मतलब 20 feet equivalent units. When when the vessel is loaded with TEUs मतलब 20 feet का container अगर load किया है तो उसका capacity कितना होगा? या FEU मतलब 40 feet equivalent units अगर load किया तो उसका capacity कितना होगा? That is the capacity of the container vessel. Nowadays, 90% of bulk cargoes are transported by containers. Okay, recently there was a vessel uh, uh, which was smuggling iPhones uh, worth some 57 or 58 crores ka iPhones pakda gaya either Nava Shiva port pe. And many of the iPhones were already sold. They were high-end phones, iPhone 12 Pro wagare thai, sab. Beche bhi hun lane kaafi sari. I mean 57 crores to police ko mila. Okay. It was a dry bulk, I mean, uh, it was a dry cargo. It was carried through a container. That container was uh, captured by uh, the police because it was smuggled. Now, Evergreen was a container vessel, if you know, that led to millions of dollars of insurance claims subsequent to the accident. This is the <coughs> Google photos ka uska photo Google map photos ka uska photo this you can see the vessel is stranded over here it's a container vessel you can see containers as well on it and this is the Swiss canal okay now there are vessels which are designed that they can pass through Swiss canal lekin aisa nahi straight line mein. okay but as I told you there are some vessels which when completely loaded they cannot pass through this so evergreen usse bhi bahut chota hai if we understand this, okay. Container, I mean, ultra large crude carriers are extremely large. Container ship, uske samne bachcha hai. Okay. Now, other ocean going ships. Uh, Lash is uh, lighter aboard ship. Jinke upar cranes rehte. The ships which have fixed cranes on them are called as lash. Okay. Then there are roll-on, roll-off vessels. So you might have seen this. Ke, uh, uh, let us assume uh, if you have ever been to Alibag from uh, Ferry Wharf. It carries vehicles as well as passengers in it. Isn't it? So you can simply drive into that vessel, uh, park your vehicle inside, you can go to the other side of the uh, sea. You can simply drive out of the vessel and is roll on, roll off. Usually, it is done in order to carry cars from one country to another country. There are layers of cars, trucks, etc. So, and, uh, there are dredgers which are ocean going. Zaruri nahi ke dredging ka kaam sirf kinare pe chalna chahi. What if there is an ultra large crude carrier coming to Mundra and uh, Mundra has a very shallow po, uh, shallow uh, sea. So, udar khatta khodne ke liye, udar channels clear karne ke liye, desilting karne ke liye. Sometimes there are ocean going treasures as well. Then passenger vehicles, these are luxury uh, passenger vessels which are luxury vessels. Cruises. Goa cruise shuru ho gaya hai. You can see cruises at uh, Bandra as well. Then LPG and LNG carriers, liquefied petroleum gas and liquid liquefied natural gas carriers. Okay. Anchor handling tug comes supply vessels. Tugs are usually those vessels which are used to tug another vessel and pull it towards the shore. Sometimes dredgers are used as tug, tugs. Remember this. Dredgers can be sometimes used as tugs. Now, the question which everyone was waiting for, what is GT and DWT? Gross tonnage. The total volume of tonnage in cubic feet plus all spaces above the deck divided by 100 is gross tonnage. Total volume of tonnage deck 
in cubic feet plus all spaces above the deck divided by 100 is gross tonnage. What is net tonnage is gross tonnage minus disbursements. What is disbursement? If you remember, jo room reta hai, crew ka accommodation boliye, toilets boliye, recreation clubs jo boliye, jo ship ke upar banate hai, cycle parking areas boliye. So gross tonnage minus disbursements is net tonnage. And what is dead weight tonnage is capacity in tons of cargo required to load the ship to the load line level. Maximum load level tak jo cargo rehta hai, usko bolte hai DW, dead weight tonnage. Okay. So, usually gross tonnage is not used in uh, marine hull terminology. What is used is net tonnage and dead weight tonnage. Dead weight tonnage is something which is related to the cargo. What is the capacity of that vessel? What capacity of cargo can the vessel carry? If the cargo is completely loaded till the load line level, that is dead weight tonnage. And gross tonnage is your total volume of deck in tonnage in cubic feet plus all spaces above the deck divided by 100. And what is net tonnage is gross tonnage minus disbursements. Okay. Now, let us come to. <coughs> marine hull policies now as i told you ke marine hull uh, marine hull mein na do type ka hi policies rehta ek rehta hai time policies aur dusra rehta hai voyage policies as i told you so here also uh, marine hull policy it is a time policy okay it is issued for one year now in hull and machinery insurance what is covered is the body is whatever you see when you see a vessel jo kuch dikhta hai wo covered hota hai hull the body of the vessel and the machinery which is used to propel this vessel that machinery and the hull is covered anything apart from this is not covered in the policy remember that agar andar koi ek room bandha hai jiske andar ek uh, let us assume a cutting edge technology ka watch rakha hai. If there is a loss and that watch is lost, yeah, what watch is damaged, you cannot claim that watch in that because it is not the part of hull or the machine. Who is the part? Who disbursement ka part? Disbursement is what? Disbursements is that place on the vessel which is which is built after the machinery is fitted on the vessel. Okay, Jesse K servant quarters, crew quarters, special room for captain, uh, engine ka room, jo engine ke baju mein jo, uh, confines lagate wo room, the toilets, etc. 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 Okay, now what does this Holland machinery insurance cover? It covers partial loss, total loss, general average, sewer and labor charges, ship owners' liability towards other vessels arising out of collision. Ya hamesha yaad rakhna jab do vessels collide hota hai na to dono ka bhi galti rehta hai both to blame collision hota hai. Okay however any collision claim is paid only up to 75% that is 3/4 collision liability. 1/4 kis mein paid hota hai agar usne uh, protection and indemnity club mein enrollment kiya ho. Now, here it is written, see, covers three-fourths of the collision liability. Remaining one-fourth is covered in P and I case. Now, for small inland vessels who cannot afford to enroll with P and I club, may cover the one-fourth collision liability at additional premium with Holland machinery insurance. And if he wants to cover he knows that he, his 75% of collision liability will be covered. What he, if he wants to cover the remaining one-fourth liability also? He does not have the money to uh, enroll with the P&I club. So better to pay extra premium to the uh, insurer itself and pay and do it. Okay. 
insurance of freight apart from halal machinery they can take insurance of freight insurance of freight kya hota hai the earnings of the vessel insurance of the acha isko limit laga ke rakha it cannot exceed 25% of the halal machinery is insured likewise disbursement jo rehta fitting out it also cannot exceed 25% of the halal machinery is मतलब तुम्हारा वेसल अगर एक करोड़ का है तो योर फ्रेट विल बी मैक्सिमम कवर्ड अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स ओनली एंड योर डिस्बर्समेंट दैट मीन्स योर फिट आउट विल बी कवर्ड ओनली अप टू द लिमिट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स ओनली नॉट बी ऑन ओके प्रोवाइड्स इंडेमिटी फॉर लॉस ऑफ फ्रेट ड्यू टू अ पेरिल ऑफ द सी दिस इंश्योरेंस डज नॉट कवर पार्शियल लॉस ऑफ फ्रेट कंप्लीट लॉस रहेगा तो इन केस ऑफ टोटल लॉस ऑफ द वेसल फ्रेट इज पेड इन फुल ओके सो रिमेम्बर दिस दैट द सम इंश्योर्ड अंडर फ्रेट इंश्योरेंस कैन नॉट एक्सीड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ हल एंड मशीनरी इंश्योरेंस हल एंड मशीनरी सम इंश्योर इंक्रीज वैल्यू ऑफ डिसबर्समेंट इंश्योरेंस आई टोल्ड यू डिसबर्समेंट आर ऑल एक्सपेंसिस दैट एजेंट्स मेक for the vessel in a port or the ship owner does when the vessel is in the ocean the sum insured for increased value or disbursements shall not exceed 25% of the halal machinery sum insured okay so usually kya hota hai malma i'll tell you i have underwritten this kind of policies all these three covers are given in one single policy halal machinery freight and disbursement हल एंड मशीनरी इंश्योरेंस का अलग से प्रीमियम लेते हैं अपन फ्रेट इंश्योरेंस का अलग से प्रीमियम लेते हैं डिस्बर्समेंट इंश्योर बट इट इज इश्यूड अंडर वन इट सॉर्ट ऑफ एन एड ऑन ओके जस्ट अ मोमेंट तेरे को अगर वो जो डीलर रहता है ना वो डीलर अगर बोलेगा कि तेरे को हम लोग से लेने का है तो उसको तेरे को प्रूव करके बताना पड़ेगा कि आई कैन ब्रिंग इंश्योरेंस विच इज लेसर देन दैट देन एंड ओनली देन यू कैन इंश्योरेंस लेसर देन व्हाट यू हैव कोटेड इन ओके Yes, yes, yes. Sure, sure. ठीक है. Yes, yes. ठीक है, ठीक है. चलें. ठीक. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Sure, sure. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. There was an office call. Uh, so, uh, premium installment facility रहता है. See, usually the sum insured. Uh, runs into uh, millions of dollars. The vessel का sum insured runs into millions. Say, I have insured a vessel which was eighty-two million US dollars. Okay, ये हलन मशीनरी का sum insured. Now उसका twenty-five percent sum insured. That means uh, some twenty crores का freight insurance. Twenty million US dollar का freight insurance. And twenty million US dollars ka disbursement insurance. Now, if the sum insured is such high, almost one sixty million US dollars, then there will be definitely a provision of one twenty million US dollars. Sorry, then there will be a definitely provision of instalments, and these instalments are paid on quarterly basis. So, marine hull policies have facility to collect the premium in instalments. In such case, premium instalments clause is attached to the policy. Premium can be collected quarterly or half yearly, whatever it is. It depends upon the these people, uh, the insured. Now, marine hull policies <coughs> exclusions. They took care. Remember, war is an exclusion everywhere. War cannot be covered either in marine uh, cargo policies unless a separate war and SRCC cover is taken. neither it is covered in hull and machinery policies 
so marine health policy so war is an exclusion strikes malicious damage nuclear risks pollution hazard जनरल एवरेज एंड सैलवेज ओनली वेसल सैलवेज इज कवर्ड हाँ कार्गो का बोल रहा हूँ वॉट इज एक्सक्लूडेड ओवर इयर इज जनरल एवरेज एंड सैलवेज ऑफ कार्गो वेसल का जनरल एवरेज कार्गो वो सैलवेज वो होता है लॉस और डैमेज टू दी कार्गो लॉस और डैमेज टू दी जेटीज वॉफ पोर्ट्स एटसेट्रा ओके नाउ रिमेम्बर वन थिंग वॉर इज नॉट कवर्ड बाय प्रोटेक्शन एंड इंडेमिटी क्लब एज वेल वॉर के लिए सेपरेट पॉलिसी लेना पड़ता है which is called as war risk insurance okay so uh, uh, let us assume that if your vessel is regularly plying from the dis- uh, disturbed waters of iran and uh, iran mein thoda sa tension hai abhi uh, if it is traveling from iran it has to undergo that part of the uh, sea ocean which is under a tension political tension तो इसके लिए वॉर रिस्क इंश्योरेंस आपको लेना जरूरी है देर आर लैटिट्यूड एंड लॉन्जिट्यूड स्पेसिफाइड इन इन अवर इन अवर बुक इट सेल्फ योर आई सी सिक्सटी वन आई गेस दे आर लैटिट्यूड एंड लॉन्जिट्यूड स्पेसिफाइड कि इसके लिए आपको वॉर रिस्क इंश्योरेंस लेना ही पड़े अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट नाउ देर हैज बीन मॉडिफिकेशन कि रशिया भी उसके अंदर आ गया है रशिया यूक्रेन का भी इंडोर्समेंट आ गया now as i told you uh, our uh, hull insurance i mean hull and machinery is governed by one clause which is called as institute time clauses hulls 110 1983 uska ek naya modification nikla tha 1995 ka we will we will go through 110 1983 and then we will see ki kya hai isme covered jo 95 mein नहीं है या फिर 95 में है और इसमें नहीं है ओके सो ऑल दोज हु आर अपियरिंग फॉर मरीन कार्गो इंच आई मीन मरीन एज दे आर वन ऑफ द ऑप्शन दे हैव टू बी थरो विद आई टी सी हल्स वन टेन नाइनटीन एटी थ्री ओके नाउ वॉट आई हैव रिटर्न ओवर हियर इज वेरी सुपरफिशियल आई मीन आई हैव जस्ट जॉटेड डाउन द पॉइंट देर इज माइन्यूट डिटेल इन साइड इट it is there in our uh, marine uh, hull insurance underwriting book okay so there are basically 26 clauses in itc hulls jisme se aisa group kiya hai group a group b group c group d group e aisa kiya so now the group a will only cover what is covered and what is excluded that is group a now what is covered and what is not is written under group a see insurance covers losses due to perils of the sea river fire explosion violent theft by person outside the vessels jettison piracy breakdown accidents to nuclear installations contact with aircraft earthquake volcanic eruption lightning it also covers accidents during loading and unloading not to the cargo to the vessel only discharging of cargo cargo ko jo uh, vessel uh, loss hoga wo nahi vessel ko jo loss hoga wo boiler burst shaft breakage latent defects in hull and machinery negligence of master see latent defects is not covered if you have studied engineering you will see that latent defects are not covered in engineering yahan pe covered hai okay negligence of masters covered officers or crew negligence of repairers or charterers barratry of masters or barratry is i told you uh, in the last lecture when the crew uh, dislodges the captain or when the captain dislodges the crew and uh, takes the vessel in his own uh, control is called as barratry and what it does not cover is war again the same thing war strikes malicious acts nuclear explosions willful misconduct losses due to rats and vermin rats is a very big problem on vessels especially general cargo vessels not on liquid cargo again general cargo vessels uh, ordinary wear and tear breakdown of machinery due to non insured peril pollution hazard 
new for old bottom treatment. Now I'll tell you one incident that happened <coughs> for which the claim was rejected uh, by New India Assurance. There was a company called ASP Ship Management Limited. They were ship managers, and uh, there was one particular vessel named Providence. I don't remember the name of the vessel. It was Providence. So it was it was plying in the uh, high seas near Mexico, and the oil which was filled in the uh, engine during the uh, course of the journey was not the one which was supposed to be filled and it was repetitively filled throughout the journey which led to some sparking in the engine and the vessel had to be taken to the nearest port for repairs there it incurred some uh, some uh, repair works in equivalent to INR, 1, uh, INR 35 crores then finally that vessel came back to India and uh, it uh, or be claim was and eventually the entire claim was more than 100 crores but that claim had to be denied because of willful misconduct or whatever you may say you know that the oil which was filled in the uh, engine was not the one which was supposed to be filled and you repeatedly did that over and over despite you knowing that fact you filled the same oil and you brought the vessel to india that is why the, that is the reason why that claim was rejected it was long back i think 2012 13 ki baat hai. okay now <clears throat> idcls now what we did in group a was what is covered and what is not Abhi, group B, mein, what is payable? So, deductible to hai. Deductible ke wajay, wajay hum kun survive nahi kar sakta insurance company. So, deductible applies to all kind of vessels, all kind of losses covered by the policy. It does not apply for ATL or uh, CTL, constructive total loss eh? uh, <coughs> and actual total loss. Unrepaired damages. The measure of indemnity in respect of claims for unrepaired damages shall be reasonable depreciation in market value of the vessel at the time this insurance terminated. Underwriter are not responsible for unrepaired damage in case of total loss. Unrepaired damages are what we claim. Then uh, proper depreciation will be applied during payment of this. Okay. So, what is payable? Ye mein bata ra. Constructive total loss may uh, <coughs> the loss if exceeds the insured value shall only be payable under the policy. Insured abandons the ship to the insurer. Ye, uh, constructive total loss ka ek ye. If the vessel is stranded, wo vessel ko hai. Abhi jane de isko and it, uh, they go. Now to bring back the vessel to its original uh, way. I mean, original form, it becomes very difficult for the uh, insurer to cope up with this. Charge. That is called as uh, constructive total loss. That means reviving the ship as it was uh, prior to the loss. Uska kharcha itna hai ke utne mein naya ship That is constructive total loss. Usually we do it with our phones. Apne phone pe hum log itna repair karke, itna kharcha karte ke usme ek naya phone a jata tha. That is constructive total loss, basically. So, uh, sue and labor charges. Uh, charges incurred in order to avert or minimize the losses. Some jo, uh, if the vessel is <coughs> stranded, if it is capsizing, then let us assume you hire some people, you anchor it on from one side and pull the vessel so that it stops sinking. So, whatever is the cost, these are sue and labor charges. Whatever charges that are applicable when you reach the port, Jobi kuch risk ya losses avoid karne ke liye, jitna bhi karcha apun karte hai, that is sue and labor. Uh, is covered under sue and labor. So, all these are covered. So, group A dealt with what is covered, what was not. Group B uh, dealt with what is payable. Now, group C depends uh, ye, ye do mein baat kar hai. Ek collision liability and dusra sister ship now <coughs> collision liability i have 
told this numerous number of times but what is sistership now read it carefully see if two vessels of the same owner collide the ship owner cannot claim from himself hai kya nahi bhi do vessel hai ye ye bhi mera hai ye bhi mera hai ye dono ka collision ho gaya now he cannot claim from him he cannot claim from him वो भी क्या करेंगे तो अपना बोट टू ब्लेम कोलिजन लाइबिलिटी रहता है अदरवाइज ये इसके ऊपर क्यों फाइल करेगा क्लेम आर यू गेटिंग इट सो इफ टू वेसल इट हैपन्स इफ देर आर हंड्रेड वेसल्स फ्लीट ऑफ वेसल्स एट द सेम पोर्ट आगे पीछे कर दो लग गया डॉक्टर not that we know of but ho gaya to kya kare so this sistership clause says that even if the vessels belong to the same owner they will be considered as two different parties and claim will be settled <clears throat> okay now group d deals with the claims procedures how the claim will be where the claim will be lodged what will be the number of days within the uh, which the claim has to be lodged etc etc group t e deals with warranties warranties mein aata hai navigation now remember this as i told you that particular latitudes longitudes are mentioned in our ic61 book and it is mentioned in our halen machinery insurance policy also matlab jo itc health ka ye jo clause hai na usme bhi mentioned if the vessel is passing through that latitude or longitude this is called as breach in navigation okay yeah breach in navigation uh, it, it it was supposed to navigate in this particular direction but it is navigating in this direction aur yahan pe sala troubled waters hai okay so warranted that navigation trial trips is not without pilots to wish to the nearest port when in need of assistance and breach of warranty is see for example if a coastal vessel restricted to ply at west coast cannot breach the demarcation point of tutti corin and ply in the west coast, east coast without any prior intimation so what i was saying is that ki agar ek latitude longitude agar mention kiya and if you are passing through that despite knowing that you cannot pass through it it is called as breach of trading warranty you are you are you are breaching the navigation rules okay so if if that is done and there is a claim there is a loss this warranty is broken so sala claim pass nahi okay now disbursement warranty uh, we will not go into this a uh, lot this is theek hai group f deals with continuous this is not that important a b c d e is important okay uh, if you have idc health 110 1983 just go through it a b c d e f ka zarurat nahi now difference between idc health 1983 and 1995 i don't know whether you can see this but i will share this powerpoint with you now this clear cut tells us कि 1983 में क्या कवर्ड है और 1995 में क्या एक्स्ट्रा है ओके सो पेरिल्स ऑफ द सी आर कवर्ड इन बोथ फायर एक्सप्लोजन कवर्ड इन बोथ वॉयलेंट थेफ्ट कवर्ड इन बोथ जेटिसन पायरसी ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर इंस्टॉलेशन इज ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ न्यूक्लियर इंस्टॉलेशन इज कवर्ड इन 1983, लेकिन इट इज नॉट कवर्ड इन नाइनटीन रिमेंबर दैट ओके इसीलिए आई टी सी हल्स वन टेन ही लगाते हैं तो ये 1995 लगाया क्यों ऐसे इफ देर आर नो न्यूक्लियर इंस्टॉलेशन वाई वुड दे रिक्वायर दिस अगर वेसल में न्यूक्लियर इंस्टॉलेशन है ही नहीं तो उसको क्यों लगेगा इट इज फॉर दो वेसल्स विच डू नॉट हैव न्यूक्लियर इंस्टॉलेशन ओके वन टेन नाइनटीन वन टेन हल्स is for those vessels jahan pe nuclear installations hai 
तो आगे देखो कॉन्टेक्ट विद हेलीकॉप्टर और सिमिलर ऑब्जेक्ट फॉलोइंग देयर फ्रॉम एटी थ्री में नो नाइनटी फाइव में ड्यू सब्जेक्ट टू ड्यू डिलीजेंस मतलब इट इज कवर्ड What if the object falls on it? It is covered in 1995. It is not in ITC. 1983. Contact with land conveyance docks covered. Earthquake, volcanic eruption, lightning covered. Accidents due to loading, discharging at the port, subject to due diligence. Otherwise, it is covered. Okay. Bursting of boilers, etc. Negligence of uh, masters or crew, negligence of repairers or charterers. In totality, two ही चीजें जिधर कवरेज नहीं मिल सकते हैं. एक तो है nuclear installations के टाइम पे और एक है falling objects. Remember this. Okay, this is the basic difference between 110, 1983 and 1995 का क्लास. I guess if you get hold of both. Just go through it. You will understand it. I mean, uh, it is better to keep two clauses in front of you rather than reading it from the book. It is there in IC sixty one. Because wo at the same time, two no big clauses read karna bahut difficult ho jata hai. Isili, if you get hold of the clauses, it is well and good. It is there in our document store. Now, ship repairer liability. As I told you, the repairer has. you know during the process of repairing the vessel it can re, uh, there there is a possibility of losses while carrying repairing to to in order to cover the loss to the vessel loss to the cargo discharge from the vessel loss to machinery and equipment liability of repairers towards removal of wreck yes sir repairer liability na cover hai okay Sometimes what happens, you know, ship breakers also has to take insurance. अभी क्यों ship breaking में क्यों क्या है ship breaking if if the engine is wanted by the owner और ship breaking के time पे तुम लोगों ने engine तोड़ दिया it is a liability, isn't it? So sometimes ship breakers also take insurance. Now what is excluded in ship repairers liability? Death Bodily injury, property of the insured, any property other than covered, war strikes, lockouts, faulty design, losses arising out of previously engaged vessel carrying explosives, flammable liquids, etc. Okay, charterers liability we have discussed about it earlier. It is a contractual or a legal liability basically of the charterer towards the owner of the vessel. Hmm? Any damage to the vessel, death. Personal injury covered. Third party damage to the pro third party property damage covered. Damage to the cargo covered. Collision, wreck removal, pollution covered. General liability, sewer and labor, to covered. Hota hi hai. Okay, liability towards cargo may arise due to bad storage. Kharaab tarike se agar rakha gaya. Stewards handling. Jo load karte hai, unko stewards bolte hai. then shortages non delivery delivery at wrong port these are the reasons why cargo ka liability arise ho sakta hai and liability towards damages to the vessel it is because again of stewards damages matlab wo jab upar rakhte hain tab they might you know who okay, get clink kar jata hai kisi ko aur there is a loss on the hull of the body hull of the vessel etc unsafe port berth Uh, damage to the vessel due to defective fuel oil i told you defective fuel and oil hai na now okay now <clears throat> this is a specific kind of kind of policy and there was a year when question on this particular policy was asked okay port package policy so whatever operations that are going on at the port is covered under port package policy jo port pe cargo upar niche rakhta hai usko marine terminal operator bolte hain mto okay 
the person who he hires to do that is called as a stevedore okay the person who brings those goods over there is called as a freight forwarder the the goods are stored over there somewhere warehousing bhi aata hai over okay again now if the vessel is going to be a huge vessel ultra large crude uh, say extremely huge vessel then dredgers will be used in order to clear the channels of the vessel uh, of the ocean dredging part if there is a loss salvage and wreck removal tugs to pull the boats towards the shore bunkering waste disposal yes sab kuch jaise annual turnover policy tha waise idhar port package policy hai okay a sea port would be exposed to many perils loss of damage to civil structure due to earthquake loss to cargo handling equipments impact damage to berths third party liability wreck removal cost of pollution the port package policy would cover the following abhi dekh property damage property and property handling equipment covered business interruption section 2 jaise fire mein rehte hai business apna ya ir policy mein rehta hai ek fire rehta hai and then flop rehta hai fire loss of profit business interruption business interruption port blockage is covered then third party liability fire may be agar optional hai third party liability de sakte customer liability and third party liability so it is analogous somewhat to that okay then comes insurance of oil and gas now uh, this is what the gulf war of 1992 was fought for ऑयल, ओके, कुवैत में काफी सारा ऑयल वेल्स था है ना नाउ दीज ऑयल वेल्स आर ऑफ फोर टाइप्स एक्सप्लोरेशन एक्सप्लोरेशन वेल्स फिर टेम्पररी वेल्स ऐसा काफी चार चार पांच टाइप का वो वेल्स रहता है प्रोडक्शन वेल तो ऑल दीज वेल्स आर कवर्ड अंडर इंश्योरेंस ऑफ ऑयल एंड गैस so exploration process of finding the accumulation of oil and natural gas trapped under the earth surface in this process different types of wells are dug in the earth surface here are char wells exploratory well appraisal well development well and producing well the policy given to such risk is called as energy package policy okay again what it covers same thing property damage प्रॉपर्टी डैमेज मतलब जो जो भी उधर इक्विपमेंट अप्लाई है लगाए हुए वो इक्विपमेंट को अगर लॉस हुआ तो इट विल बी कवर वेर एंड टेयर मैकेनिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल ब्रेकडाउन इनहेरेंट वाइस लेटर डिफेक्ट ग्रेजुएशन डिफेक्ट ग्रेजुअल डिटीरियरेशन लैक ऑफ ड्यू डिलीजेंस कॉस्ट ऑफ फायर फाइटिंग एक्सेट्रा इज नॉट कवर सेक्शन टू कंट्रोल ऑफ वेल उधर बिजनेस इंटरप्शन इधर कंट्रोल ऑफ वेल मतलब क्या अगर ड्यूरिंग ऑपरेशन इफ द वेल कैच एस फायर नाउ रिमेंबर प्रीवियस स्लाइड में इधर बोलते हैं कॉस्ट ऑफ फायर फाइटिंग एक्सेट्रा इज नॉट कवर है ना और इधर बोलते हैं कवर्स कॉस्ट ऑफ फायर फाइटिंग क्योंकि वो सेक्शन वन में कवर्ड नहीं है सेक्शन टू में कवर्ड वॉट इट covers cost of regaining control of any insured well that is out of control covers cost of reinstating the well to the same state as it were before it went out of control that is indemnification cost of removal contaminated substances emanating from the well cost of claims arising out of seepage pollution or contamination now can you imagine what kind of a policy is this it's an extremely dangerous policy it whatever policy that covers pollution and contamination now what sort of a dangerous policy that remember then finally the third party is always third party liability losses happening to other because of us let us assume that we are the oil owners i mean well owners physical loss or damage to the third party property 
death injury of any third party nuclear risk war risks are excluded occupational disease breach of contract error or omission are excluded to occupational disease kahan pe cover hoga wo health insurance mein ho jayega na okay that will be covered under we are now only thinking about the equipment that is used in digging the wells pulling the uh, oil out equipment okay and the liability is arising due, due to that okay now this is a very interesting policy have you ever heard of this have you ever heard of this single boy mowing policy now it's a very interesting policy uh isko uh, <coughs> single point mooring bhi bolte hain uh now what you see in red color in this picture is the buoy okay aur ye jo vessel hai na ye very large crude carrier hai okay now uh, let us assume let us assume you example in let's say hundra port see there is a refinery in batinda इसको बोलते हैं गुरु गोबिंद सिंह सिंह रिफाइनरी इट बिलोंग्स टू दीएल मित्तल एनर्जी लिमिटेड ओके नो बटिंडा में नियरेस्ट पोर्ट किधर है है ही नहीं बटिंडा में समुंदर नहीं है तो पोर्ट किधर रहेगा सो द नियरेस्ट पोर्ट टू देम इज मुंद्रा एंड मुंद्रा इज सच अ स्मॉल पोर्ट दैट इधर वीएलसीसी आ ही नहीं सकते सो द वीएलसीसी विल वेट समवेयर 20 किलोमीटर इनसाइड द वेसल इन साइड द ओशन ओके और उधर से वो पाइप डालेगा इस बॉय में यू कैन सी दू पाइप इन द बॉय और ऑयल इज एम टीड इन द बॉय फ्रॉम दीज टू पाइप एंड देन देर विल बी अनदर टू पाइप दैट विल कैरी दिस पंप दिस ऑयल टू दी शोर और वहां से पाइपलाइन में होके मुंद्रा टू बटिंडा ऑयल जा रहा है Okay, various pumping stations are built in between there. So, any loss to the equipment of the buoy, the buoy floating is, but it is floating below. So, hook is put on the bed of the buoy, so it is floating below. So, any loss occurring to the buoy is covered. Okay, what some insured high rate is, and it is a very critical and a very gradual process. it takes around days to continue uh, to complete this process okay kyunki 10 second ka spillage agar ho gaya na to pura pollution contamination ho jayega samundar ke andar okay let us enter this what are the risks covered in sbm policy single boy mooring the boy physical damage salvage wreck removal third party liability sewer and labor damage to the vessel by government authority perils of the sea fire lightning explosion contact with aircraft accidents in loading discharging the cargo second part is the pipeline jo pipe carry kar raha hai to uske liye london standard pipeline form all risk cover rahe hai all risk of physical and uh, physical loss or damage are covered and c part is the cargo तो कार्गो तो अपन ने लास्ट टाइम किया था आईबीओ क्लॉज है ना इंस्टीट्यूट बल्क ऑयल क्लॉज आईसीसी ए के साथ इसको आईबीओ लगा देते ड्यूरिंग ट्रांसशिपमेंट अगर स्पिलेज हुआ तो वो कवर्ड है कॉन्टेमिनेशन कवर्ड है इफ यू रिमेम्बर थर्ड पार्टी लाइबिलिटी इज दी लास्ट पार्ट वॉट इज नॉट कवर्ड इन एस बी एम पॉलिसी इज अगेन न्यूक्लियर वॉर रिस्क ग्रेजुअल वेर एंड टेयर लॉसेज ड्यू टू डीले strikes riots malicious damages terrorism they can be taken as add on and earthquake and volcanic eruption they can also be taken as add on now apart from this uh, this is a question which is most probably asked in uh, all sort of uh, uh, this uh, exams marine insurance association and standards now iua is the international underwriting association of london it promotes and enhances business environment 
for international insurance and reinsurance jhc that is joint hull committee jitne bhi marine hull insurance underwriter hai na unka interests protect karne ke liye ye ek joint hull committee banaya gaya hai it protects the interest of the uh, marine hull underwriters hmm? in london market then joint war committee protects interest of joint uh, of marine hull uh, war underwriters in the london market okay then iumi is international union of marine insurance uh, ye uh, jo short forms hai na wo puche ja sakte it maintains an international platform for views and ideas relating to hull underwriting shipping industry surveyors and international law officers get all the views i mean uh, not only uh, the insurance people but in fact those people who belong to international law those fight cases at international level for these uh, various shipping companies they can also give their inputs to iumi and certain modifications can be done in the rules laid down by them imb is international maritime bureau jitna bhi frauds and mal practices hota hai in order to keep an eye on that this has been developed imb ism code is <clears throat> the purpose of ism code is to ensure safety okay safety management basically act c prevent human injury or loss of life avoid damage to environment and to the ship ye international uh, safety management code hai ism code okay now there is one institution uh, called as marpol which is uh, which this ka full form of marine pollution now this looks jaise uh, ki imb looks after frauds and mal practices marpol looks after marine pollution agar sbm policy hai chal raha hai SBM चल रहा है सिंगल बॉय मूरिंग चल रहा है एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम इफ देर इज विलेज देर इज पोल्यूशन सो मार्पोल इज द बॉडी विच लुक्स इन टू दिस पोल्यूशन इट डिसाइड द अमाउंट ऑफ फाइन दैट आर टू बी लिव टू दी शिप ओनर और द चार्टर और द पर्सन हु इज हैंडलिंग द कार्गो डिजाइन टू मिनिमाइज पोल्यूशन ऑफ द सीज इंक्लूडिंग डंपिंग ऑयल एंड एग्जॉस्ट पोल्यूशन प्रिजर्व मरीन एनवायरमेंट through complete elimination of pollution by oil okay now i would like to tell you uh, there are three types of marine hull insurance frauds marine hull insurance fraud teen type ka rehta isme se first type is the rust bucket fraud okay uh, ya fir uh, we had discussed that in previous lecture that was scuttling fraud so rust bucket fraud is what when a vessel is has already reached its uh, completion of the commercial life okay to usko kya karte hai wo khali vessel leke jate hai and usko ya fir usko load karke vessel leke jate hai as a tramp and then it is deliberately sunk in the middle of the ocean and then the cargo owners claim from the cargo underwriters and the owner of the ship claims from the vessel underwriters hull underwriters so ye ek type ka com a common type of fraud hai which is called as rust bucket fraud the second type of fraud is paint brush fraud paint brush fraud uh abhi ye kya hai paint brush fraud is Uh, let us assume that there is a vessel called as M M Violet. Okay, so uh, so vessel को paint करते और उसका नाम change कर देते. But it see M M Violet है. इसका insurance नहीं है. Okay, लेकिन M M Green है, जिसका insurance है. Okay. तो अभी और ये एम एम वॉलेट तो वैसे भी बहुत खर्चा निकल रही है तो वॉट देव डू इज दे पेंट द वेसल इंस्टेड ऑफ एम एम वॉलेट दे राइट एम एम ग्रीन एंड दे डिलीवरेटली सिंक द वेसल एंड द्लेम फ्रॉम दल अंडर राइटर्स 
This is called as paint brush fraud. Again, there is third kind of fraud which is phantom vessel fraud. Phantom vessel fraud is ऐसे नाम का कोई vessel ही नहीं रहता, कोई vessel नहीं रहता है, लेकिन उसका एक डमी पार्टी ऐसा कहीं पे किसी शिपिंग रजिस्टर में ऐसा ही बना के रख देते एंड देन क्लेम इज डन ऑन दैट वेसल ये फैंटम वेसल फ्रॉड सो दीज आर दाइंड ऑफ फ्रॉड विच ऑकर नाउ देर इज वन चार्टर पार्टी फ्रॉड चार्टर पार्टी फ्रॉड नाउ वॉट इज दिस चार्टर पार्टी फ्रॉड इज वेन द when the shipping market is down okay uh, that the vessels are not plying the oceans regular on the regular basis so what what happens is during that time new charter parties come up okay aaj aisa aisa kitne baar hota hai ki ek charter party khulta hai xyz charterers and logistics aisa khulta hai Uh, they come to you and they say के तुम्हारा vessel uh, we are going to charter it kindly let us have your vessel we will provide you with charterers liability insurance they take charterers liability insurance and uh, they take the vessel they take it somewhere they completely dismantle the vessel और उसको बेच देते next day you will see that there did not exist any charterer like this Ever, this is called as charter party fraud. Okay, ऐसा काफी सारा होता है frauds internationally. Okay, uh, there is one charter party. It charters a vessel. Next day the vessel is sold somewhere else. उसका एक part US में बेचा है, एक part Greece में बेचा है, एक part इधर बेचा है. And that charter party, when a uh, claim a uh, uh, claim is filed against that charter party, that charter party is nowhere to be found. ओके okay, वो प्रीमियम भर के बराबर चार्टर लाइबिलिटी का प्रीमियम ये भी लेता है पॉलिसी भी लेता है लेकिन वो पार्टी है ही नहीं क्योंकि उसने वेसल बेच के पैसा कमा लिया ओके दीज आर सम टाइप ऑफ मैरिटाइम फ्रॉड्स व्हिच आर लुक इनटू बाय आईएमबी इंटरनेशनल मैरिटाइम ब्यूरो ओके नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट ऑफ मरीन हल इंश्योरेंस I have completed over here. I usually मतलब ये एक दस पंद्रह मिनट पहले खत्म हो ही जाता है जब भी मैंने लिया है तो इज देर एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर साइड टू मी बिकॉज सी इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गो इन टू क्लेम्स एंड चेक करना मतलब क्लेम्स का प्रोसीजर वगैरह चेक करना है it varies from vessel to vessel it is there is no thumb rule in uh, marine health claims so uh, it is very difficult for us to complete that in 2 hours so i did not touch the claim part uh, so uh, is there any question from your side uh, to me so that about this presentation i mean you, the part which you did not understand is there uh, sir सो देर इज अ जनरल क्वेश्चन सर ये जो हल का पार्ट है मरीन कार्गो और मरीन हल का रेशो क्या है कितने सवाल पूछे जाते हैं इससे हल पे सर इट इट यूजुअली ये जो है ना ऐसे बता नहीं सकते हम लोग हाउ एवर आई टेल यू द रेशियो ऑफ मरीन कार्गो क्वेश्चन इज मोर एज कम्पेयर टू मरीन हल ओके इसमें एक हाथ दूसरा क्वेश्चन कभी कभी एविएशन का भी आ जाता है ओके सो यूजुअली एविएशन कोई आई मीन एविएशन का एक या दो सवाल ही रहते हैं बट इफ यू हैव डन मरीन हल इंश्योरेंस प्रॉपरली ना तो यू कैन आंसर दोज वन और टू क्वेश्चंस ऑफ एविएशन हाउ एवर एम्फोसिस इज मोर ऑन मरीन कार्गो इंश्योरेंस देन ऑन मरीन हल ओके क्योंकि मरीन हल इज एक्सट्रीमली टेक्निकल मरीन कार्गो इज समथिंग दैट इज डेल्ड विद द अंडर राइटर्स ऑन डे टू डे बेसिस मरीन हल इज नॉट समथिंग लाइक दैट ओके तो डेफिनेटली मरीन कार्गो का रेशियो हायर रहता है एज कम्पेयर टू मरीन हल यस एविएशन का लेक्चर लेने वाले हैं आप एविएशन का लेक्चर नहीं लेने वाले हैं आई मीन मुझे ऐसा कोई कुछ बताया नहीं है ओके एनीथिंग एल्स
I uh, yes, uh, last time you told me that you wanted this uh, PowerPoint to be shared. Uh, I will share it with Prasad Sakharkar and uh, uh, Jeevan today, and uh, they will share it on Telegram. Both these presentations. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so Thank you. shall we call it a day then? Okay. Thank you very much. In case if you, Thank you. In case if you need anything about uh, marine or fire insurance uh, or engineering insurance, you may ask me. My number is nine three two six four five double eight six five. Or I will. Uh, what I'll do is I'll write it on the first page of the presentation and I'll then circulate it so that everyone will. I mean, if you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me as well. So. Now, basically, ninety five clause is applicable or eighty three, sir. Kindly write some mobile number also. Yes, yes. So, we... so I have written it already. So, in case if you require anything, you can WhatsApp me or you can uh, straight away call me. No problem at all. Okay. Sir, एक बार uh, एक बार स्लाइड नंबर फिफ्टी बस खोल देना बस एक पॉइंट रह गया नोट जी जी बस एक पॉइंट रह गया नोट करने वाला फिफ्टी या फिफ्टी टू फाइव जीरो फिफ्टी फिफ्टी यस हेयर इट इस ओके सर थैंक यू ओके जी जी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू आज अभी शेयर कर देता हूँ जीवन से और प्रसाद से दे विल शेयर इट ऑन ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर एग्जाम थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सो मच फॉर मेकिंग